Good afternoon. This is Justin Deaton with the uh, East Side Free Will Baptist Church. As always, we appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Uh, it has been a couple of weeks since we last had our last uh, prophecy study. Uh, of course, last week I was in a conference down in Pigeon Forge, uh, C.T. Townsend Ministries. Uh, the conference went really well. Had over 3,000 people that were down there, over 150 some churches. To my knowledge, over 300 uh, first time uh, decisions. Uh, folks that came to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior had two from our own youth group uh, that got saved, so the conference was extremely successful uh, as far as that goes. We do appreciate Brother C.T. Townsend, his entire team, and everybody that made that possible. So it has been a couple of weeks since we've been able to have our uh, uh, prophecy studies, and today I'm going to try to finish up uh, Revelation chapter 17. We only like a few verses there, but just to give you a little bit of some uh, review of what we have covered so far. Uh, we've talked, of course, a lot about uh, uh, Mystery Babylon, which a lot of it has to do with that. The woman, of course, on the Scarlet Beast, and and I gave you what I think about it and what many other uh, people think about who this might be referring to. Of course, it is a false religious system. Uh, it's pretty obvious. Uh, Roman Catholic Church, as I've told you the last uh, two prophecy studies, uh, seems to be a a, a, a a group that really fits this uh, Roman Catholicism. Now, like I said, it's not <clears throat> the Roman Catholic Church parts of it today, but you got to keep in mind that this deals with after the rapture of the church. And as I've told you before, you need to keep watching uh, American Catholics versus European Catholics. You're seeing a little bit of some splits going on there, uh, differences of opinion. Uh, American Catholics tend to be more... Uh, traditional and fundamental uh, biblically speaking as opposed to their European counterparts and you're seeing that become more and more uh, apparent uh, especially in the last year or two it's, it's such things as abortion uh, gay marriage uh, things like that most of the court cases that have taken place in the Supreme Court are, are uh, as far as abortion and gay and uh, giving kids to gay couples has predominantly uh, been brought forth by the Catholic Church so uh, you can see they have a pretty strong stance on those things, whereas their European counterparts uh, do not you know, have quite the strong stance or, or believe they should not be so adamant about those things. Uh, as a matter of fact, of course, one thing we did cover a couple weeks ago, uh, we told you about the Catholic Church here in America denying uh, certain government officials, the President of the United States, Speaker of the House, uh, their sacraments because of their stance uh, of being pro-choice. Uh, the uh, Catholic uh, Pope in Europe, uh, or the Pope I should say in Europe, uh, was not very pleased with that as far as uh, them doing that. But once again, you can see kind of a, a split going on, difference of opinions, and and you're seeing that more and more widespread. Uh, the Catholic Church, as we as we mentioned, uh, if you look back through the years, they were heavily involved in the coronation of kings and queens, especially in Europe. Uh, they are the last thing, uh, as it stands today that is left of the old uh, Roman Empire, uh, one of the last strong uh, organizations left, excuse me, from the Roman Empire. Vatican City itself is a city within the city of Rome, and it's considered a, a separate city, if you will. Uh, you, as you go in, the Vatican City got all the flags of the, the various nations of the world. As the old saying goes, for Rome of old, all roads lead to Rome. Uh, that still holds true today as far as Vatican City goes. Also, too, the Catholic Church was known to be very brutal, especially in the 15, 1600s, uh, with uh, people who carried a Bible. If you were not a Catholic priest, you were not supposed to be carrying a Bible around or having any type of Bible study in your home, especially if you had your neighbors involved. And a lot of folks lost their lives, and that led to the pilgrims uh, searching out a, a new world, and it's, probably, and it's led predominantly to what you have in America today. Uh, you know, regardless of what you're being taught in some of these secular history classes, which are just totally wrong and totally dismiss these things, it cannot be denied that the Pilgrims, Puritans, those people came to the Americas for religious freedom and the ability to carry this right here without getting killed. Uh, if you don't believe that, go read John Fox's Book of Martyrs. Okay, 
uh, very vivid and, and pretty self-explanatory. Uh, explain it to you uh, why America is what it is today as far as uh, came into existence as it is today. Uh, because of people who want that religious freedom. That's why in the Founding Fathers putting their separation of church and state, uh, not from church and state. Uh, that's something that's very misquoted by a lot of liberals uh, in, in our nation today, and they are totally wrong in, in saying what they say. It is separation of church and state. Uh, our Founding Fathers did not want the church to be involved in, in the marrying of kings and queens like it was in Europe, but at the same time, they didn't want the state involved in people's individual lives as Christians, okay? That was how it was meant to be. But the teachings of the Word of God, our Founding Fathers were very clear. You don't believe me? Go look up the quotes yourself. Uh, were very clear on how they felt about the Bible and how they felt as its importance as far as school goes, learning and teaching goes. They felt the Bible was very, very uh, foundational in those teachings in public school and in a lot of the morals and laws that we have today, okay? Uh, you can go look up their quotes yourself. All you got to do is Google them on the Internet, then you'll see that. So, having talked about all that, of course, uh, we, we saw that, uh, that course, verse 6, drinking with the blood of saints, that goes back to John Fox's Book of Martyrs, verse 6, uh, the mystery of the woman of the beast, and uh, she said, of course, the angel does explain to John uh, who it is and what he's talking about. Of course, a lot of it points to being possibly uh, Vatican City, uh, very possible. Now, once again, this is after the rapture of the church. Okay, I cannot stress that enough. You've got to keep in mind, you can't look in today how things are today and try to visualize a tribulation period. You have to remove, and I think a couple of the preachers last week at the conference tried to make this point as well. You have to remove Christians from this nation and see what you're left with. Okay? Uh, look today in our nation. You've got more, you know, confusion as the things going on as far as the COVID goes. Uh, that seems to be very prevalent here lately. A lot of uh, it's become highly politicized and it's getting worse. Okay? And things in our nation are, are getting worse. I mean, crime is very prevalent. Uh, that goes back to Revelation chapter 9. We've quoted on several occasions. Uh, that that seems to be just more and more. I mean, it just uh, murders and so forth. But but people are just openly stealing things and just walking around out the store with it, and, and people powerless to stop them. Uh, that goes back to some things in Revelation chapter nine that the Bible talks about that they are unrepentant for those things, and they're still unrepentant for those things. I mean, the looting that took place last summer; uh, those folks are very unrepentant for that, and even leaders in D.C. Uh, don't call them out on it. Uh, it's just, it's it's very sad state of affairs, to be honest with you. And all these things are leading up. And you got to keep in mind, if Christians were gone, if the church is gone, not only the church, but you got certain leaders, not only in America, but in the European nations, uh, other nations around the world, if those folks are raptured out, what are you left with? And that includes the church, you know, like the Roman Catholic Church. I mean, if true Christians are taken out of the Roman Catholic Church and raptured out of here, what are you left with? Okay? And that's what you got to keep in mind in studying these things. And when anytime you review Revelation, especially during the tribulation period, Christians are gone. And that's the prism you got to look through. Now, it goes on through verses 8 through 13, the angel does, and tries to explain, of course, uh, one thing in particular uh, about the goeth into perdition. Uh, only the Antichrist and Judas Iscariot are considered uh, sons of perdition or perdition. That word is tied to them, which means hell or, or going into those places. Uh, the thing about it, and I said this a couple of weeks ago, I'll, I'll remind you again. You know, Judas Iscariot, Jesus said, I have got me twelve, one of you is a devil. Everybody kind of gets confused and says, how in the world did Judas Iscariot end up being a disciple? Well, Christ said, I chose twelve, one of you is a devil. And what Jesus is telling you, because he knows the heart, that Judas' heart was just never fully with him. Okay? Excuse <coughs> me. Was never fully with him. And that's what he's telling you. And I, I go back to the illustration I gave. If you read the Bible through or you study the Bible, and, and you continue to read the Bible through year after year after year and build up a good foundational knowledge of God, foundational knowledge of Jesus Christ, and a foundational knowledge of what the Bible teaches us, okay? Then, then you give the Lord something to work with. 
that works in the opposite direction too as far as the devil and those that choose not to hide the word of God in their heart. Okay, That gives the devil something to work with. And Judas, as we know, was already very sinful. He, he was very uh, hungry for money. Uh, he took 30 pieces of silver to betray Christ, was in control of the money bag when the disciples were together and was accused of actually taking things from the money bag, which the Bible says that he did do. Uh, of course, God wrote, inspired to have the Bible written. He knows exactly in Judas's heart knows what he done. Okay, so we see that Judas was hungry for the things of this world, and he gave Satan plenty to work with. And the Bible says Satan entered into him before he betrayed Christ. Same thing with the Antichrist. Uh, the Antichrist will be a very anti-God individual, probably atheistic. We we'll use religion as a means to an end. Okay. Uh, we'll tell you what you want to hear. We hear a lot of that going on in our nation today. Uh, just trying to tell you a lot of what you want to hear. And, and he'll just use it as a means to an end. Many politicians do that today. They use uh, religion or any type of fad or anything happening as a means to an end to stay in office, stay in power. The Antichrist will be no different. Okay, He'll do the same thing. And uh, he'll give Satan, of course, plenty of tools to work with. And Satan will enter into him. And hence, you've got the Antichrist and the brutality that will follow. And that's what the the angel there explained to him. You've got these kingdoms. Of course, he mentions ten horns. I mentioned last week, if it's ten plus the Antichrist, that gives you eleven, which is ironically the number for chaos, which I found that very interesting. But I do believe that three, as the book of Daniel points out, three will rise against him. As to who those three are, who knows? Uh, a lot of theologians, uh, I tend to agree with them as well, I believe America may be one of those three uh, that rise up against the Antichrist because China, Russia, and those European nations still seem to have a role to play uh, at the Battle of Armageddon, and so that, you know, you look at the United States, you look at Canada, uh, you look at Australia, which is very strong Christian element in it, so surprisingly, and is a continent all to itself. Uh, of course, the United Kingdom, Great Britain, I know it's not what it used to be, but still there's a pretty uh, Christian element in there. But I'll give you another uh, nation to, to point out as well, uh, South Korea. Uh, South Korea is a very strong Christian uh, nation right now. they got churches in there that run as a church, as a membership, active membership of 80,000. They actually have service six to seven times, uh, six to seven days a week, three times a day. Uh, Brother Ralph Sexton had the privilege of speaking at that church. Uh, the auditorium holds about 3,000, so you can see where they're getting all the extra services. If only one service can hold 3,000 and you have 80,000 on your membership row. Uh, South Korea is a very strong. The Philippines is another nation. Now, it's northern Philippines, not southern Philippines so much. So, so you've got, and once again, I go back to my other statement, the Christian element is gone, but having... A strong Christian influence like in the Americas or in the South Korea or in a, a Great Britain. Uh, we had a guy that, that uh, missionary to England that was here and spoke to us, uh, Galen did, and was telling us about them trying to get things revived there. Uh, a nation like Australia, uh, Ken Ham, uh, Answers in Genesis is from Australia. So you, you see nations like that that do have a, a pretty strong Christian element in them. Uh, that may not be so easily forgotten in the tribulation period. And those people may actually rise up, plus your Jewish preachers probably have a lot more freedom uh, to preach in those countries as opposed to some of the others, okay? So the ten kings, of course, uh, three do rise up against them. And that's back in the book of uh, Daniel. And uh, he puts them down, the Antichrist does. And then uh, you go back to verse 13. These have one mind shall give their power and strength to the beast. Of course, eventually, whenever, I think, three and a half years in, the Antichrist puts down those three kings, uh, sets up his kingdom, sets up his rulership with the, the newly built temple by the Jews in Israel. That's when he turns full bore against the Jews, and God has to hide them. And, and you see all these uh, other kings that are left, uh, rulers of the world, put their might behind him and look at him as being their ruler overall okay in verse 14 and we'll cover the rest of revelation 17 the bible says these shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them now that's making a reference to the battle of armageddon and it's very sad and the reason i say this is sad uh, these people are deceived by the antichrist and 
millions of people will lose their lives and, and end up uh, putting themselves in an eternal hell for the rest of their life. That, that, that's what's sad about this. That the Antichrist doesn't care anything about these people. Uh, like the devil, uh, his end game is to drag as many people down to hell as he can. And he's actually calling these people to their doom. Whether it's the armies of China, Russia, uh, whatever armies he pulls, these other seven kings that are left, they're going to be defeated. You, you cannot defeat a living God. Uh, it's not possible. I don't care how many submarines, nuclear weapons, carriers, how many people's in your army or whatever. You, you cannot defeat someone who can speak you in and out of existence. There, there's no chance. And, and the sad reality is these people are being pulled to their ultimate doom by the Antichrist, but they have made their decision to side with the forces of the devil. And that and is inherently sad. That's why as Christians today, uh, we have got to tell folks about this, that this deception that, that is happening. I'm going to preach on the radio here in, in a little while. Uh, why are you waiting so long talking about Jericho? Uh, Rahab very clearly told the two spies when they came into Jericho that Jericho, her city, was fully aware of what God done for the Israelites and part in the Red Sea. They knew fully well what God had done for the Israelites and getting them out of Egyptian bondage. Now he has sustained them in the wilderness and they knew fully well that God promised them the land. But Rahab was the only one that sought mercy and got it. Nobody else in Jericho did and they all perished. You know, same thing here at the Battle of Armageddon. Uh, I believe people today in this world knows that something's getting ready to happen. A, a, a huge change is going to happen in a huge uh, bomb, I don't mean a literal bomb, but an information or, or, or a huge change bomb, if you will, is about to drop. And things are going to change forever. And I don't think people people know it's coming, but they won't do anything about it. And that's the sad reality. And here the Bible says, the Lamb shall overcome them. that They will be defeated. For he is Lord of lords, King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. It's just that simple. I've always told the church at the end of the tribulation period, make sure you are behind Christ when he returns to this earth, not in front of him. Okay? If you are behind him, chances are you've been raptured out, martyred during the tribulation period, and you know Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you are in front of him, Chances are you have probably sided with the forces of the Antichrist and you're about to be ultimately defeated. And hell is about to become your eternal home. So even though it's it's a victory for the Lord, it's not a victory. How do I say this? I remember watching a movie one time. Uh, you know, somebody had won a victory, but it was nothing to really sing about, be happy about, because those on the other side have lost their eternal souls forever. And I guess that's the way you have to look at this. These people are going to be not just lose a battle, but they're going to lose ultimately their eternal soul. The Bible says in verse 15, He saith unto me, and this is once again the angel still talking to John, And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are the peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Once again, the influence of this Babylon or false church. Once again, the Catholic church has been heavily influential. Uh, on the waters. I mean, you, you look at its conception uh, back during the days of Constantine until today, it has had a heavy influence, and I can't reiterate enough, it was very heavily involved in the marrying of kings and queens in Europe back in the, the medieval times. And it is still heavily involved today in affairs of this world, okay? And as I've told you many a times, the Catholic Church is extremely, especially in Europe, the Vatican City, is extremely wealthy. You know, and I'm just telling you what our guide told us. They could pay the world's debt off ten times over. Okay? That was back in 2012. So so one, you know, sits on the peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues because its influence has been that worldwide. And it has been. Man, we go back to our discussion a couple weeks ago. Uh, we think about the Methodist church splitting, which basically affected the United States. The Presbyterian denomination splitting. That primarily affected the United States. If the Catholic Church 
goes through any type of power struggle or split, let's say West versus East, Americas versus Europe, it will be worldwide felt, not just in a nation. Okay? So a huge difference there uh, in the outreach that the Catholic Church has had. Okay? It says, In the ten horns which thou sawest, verse 16, upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. Interesting. And shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Here's the thing. The false church, whether it's some kind of false Catholicism, or whatever false church it is that comes out if Mr. Babylon is something different, be that as it may, many believe it is a false type church. So, this false church is after three and a half years going to be despised. In other words, once again, I get back to what I told you about the Antichrist. He uses religion or anything and even people or armies or nations as a means to an end. That's it. It, it gives me power and authority. I'll use it. When I can no longer get power and authority out of it or its influence is gone or I have risen above its influence. In other words, I'm able to, I apologize, I got poison ivy and poison oak, so don't, don't be afraid. <laughs> don't, nothing like I just got poison ivy and poison oak. But anyways, uh, when a person reaches a certain point where they no longer need something's help or someone's help or an organization's help, in other words, they're able to do it on their own because ultimately they want to be recognized themselves, they'll do away with it. And that is exactly what the Antichrist and these nations are going to do with this false church or this, if you want to call it Roman, false Roman Catholic Church, or whatever you want to call it, they're going to do away with it, okay? And it still takes money, and I've said this several times in our Revelation study, and Daniel, it still takes money to hire armies. People are not going to fight for nothing. And I, I granted, during the tribulation period, there's not going to be a whole lot to fight for, but they still want to get paid. I repeat once again, my son is in the Air Force. Uh, he didn't join the Air Force just to travel the world and see things, get more education. Sure, he did it for, for those reasons, but he did also did it too to get paid. He is getting paid to be in the United States military. Okay? Same thing with these people here. Here you've got this false church sitting over here or, you know, that has served its purpose for the Antichrist. The Antichrist ain't going to share power with anybody. And it served its purpose. He wants worship to be about him, not the false church. So he looks over and he also notices too that false church as well as the kings that are with him. Notice that this false church is sitting on a huge pile of money. A huge pile of riches and treasures. Remember what I told you that our guide told us that was in Vatican City. He said they have enough wealth to pay the world's debt off ten times over. So yeah, they're going to start coming after them and crushing them and make her desolate. In other words, take the treasures. Use it to pay their armies and pay for their protection. Uh, folks, law and order, you're seeing firsthand, it's breaking down the United States. These idiots back in the summer that call for defund the police, and that's exactly what they are, idiots, that call for defund the police, they are reaping what they have sowed in these big cities. And it's going to get worse. Now, you can sit there and you know, many, predominantly people that may be watching maybe from Elizabeth and Tennessee and, and granted our police force here in Elizabeth and in Carter County I think do a really good job uh, predominantly in the Tri-Cities do they have their issues and problems? They probably do but predominantly by and large they do a very good job in, in keeping the peace and law and order in our areas okay uh, as the old saying goes we don't we love the police until they write us a ticket <laughs> or, they, you know, or they, they come after us okay because we've done something we shouldn't be doing but by and large, they do a very good job around I know several of the men and women that serve on our local police forces, and they're good people, good Christian people, I might add, okay? And they do the best job that they can do, all right? But we are sheltered here because the relationship be between community and police is pretty good in our area, all right? So we're kind of sheltered here. But I promise you these police officers will be the first to tell you in our area you go outside this area and you go to bigger cities, the D.C.s, the Chicago's, the Los Angeles, the Seattle's, the Portland's, the Minneapolis, all these areas that have had problems, even in Nashville, Tennessee, that's had problems to a certain extent. They'll tell you it's vastly different there, and there is some breakdowns 
and law and order. And these now these mayors are on there begging for police to come back, begging for money, okay, and, and begging to, to hire more cops. And, and people are like, I ain't going to be a cop in that city because you'll hang me out to dry. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them one bit. If you're going to be hung out to dry for doing your job, forget that. I don't care what you offer to pay me. I ain't going to do it for that. And that's what's happening to these people. But you're seeing the breakdown of law and order in the freest country in the world. See, once again, this plays into what the Bible is telling us in the book of Revelation. And, you know, you see these nations go right after this false religious system without any fear of consequences. They don't care. They're going to loot it, steal from it, destroy it, and pick it clean. That's what the Bible is telling you there. They shall make her desolate, naked, shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. They're going to completely destroy this false church and pick it clean of its riches without any worry of consequences. Okay? I always keep in mind, the devil conditions people. All right? And I've said this many a times from the pulpit in my church. You go back to the late 80s, early 90s, and these little sitcoms. Even though they wouldn't come out and say they were gay, and they, they weren't gay, but you'd have like two moms raising kids, or, or, or two dads raising kids. And, and even though they weren't gay, they, circumstances happened. But still yet, they, you were being conditioned to accept those things. Okay? Look at back some of the other things on TV that you remember watching where you were conditioned to say, well, that, that don't look like it's too bad. It looks like it's okay. And you're kind of conditioned to accept those things. Satan's been doing that for centuries with the human, with the human race. And he'll continue to do that. He conditions you for things, and then he pushes the sin in. Okay? The day we have gay marriage. Abortion. Okay? I get you conditioned for these things, then I'm going to get you. Polygamy is the next thing coming. You're, you're being conditioned for that right now. There's already all kinds of shows on TV showing how that lifestyle is okay. There's nothing wrong. These are just normal people like you and I, and, and, but they're living a polygamy lifestyle, getting multiple wives or multiple husbands. Already you're being conditioned to accept that. Even the one of the Black Lives Matter, if you will, was all about the community raising your kids. What do you think that is? Wake up. Okay? That's exactly what they're talking about. Alright? You're being conditioned for those things. It's very Marxist in its belief system. Extremely Marxist in its belief system. Go look it up yourself. So you're being conditioned for those things. Okay? Law and order. Whatever you see, take it. You just take it. Ultimately, the false church is going to be the victim of those things in the tribulation period. Already being conditioned that it's okay, no problem, rise up. If you don't like what the church is saying, you don't like what the preacher's preaching, you can just turn him off, shut him up, whatever. And we've had several uh, social media accounts of various pastors because they've simply preached what the Bible says, shut down. Okay? You're being conditioned. The devil is conditioning this world for the tribulation period. Make no mistake about it. And here you see they're going to hate her, make her desolate, this false church, burn her with fire, take her riches. Because they can. We want them, we're taking them. And you're seeing that attitude, if you will, prevalent in our society today. So the false church is, you know, is turned upon by the very people it was trying to promote. Okay? You know, if for one thing we've learned real quickly, the devil's crowd will eat their own. And I, I don't mean just eat their own. Pick them clean. I mean, church people get accused of doing that a lot. And unfortunately, they do. But in the devil's crowd, they do too. And they will pick you clean. Verse 17. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will. Here's the thing. God is not absentee, nor is he lax in his promises. Uh, we had a very good Bible study last night uh, about King Solomon and the prayer that he prayed there. I think it's in 1 Kings chapter 8, talking about one day when the nation of Israel is going to be taken captive to faraway nations. Now, at that particular time, when he said that in his prayer, the common everyday Israelite that was present is probably thinking to himself, 
That's impossible. I mean, we've got chariot cities everywhere. We got actually a police force, you know, taking care of our highways and roads. We got, you know, riches coming into our kingdom. Everybody's doing well, law and order. Our borders are secure. The Egyptians and the Syrians wouldn't dare think about picking a fight with us right now, as strong as our military is. And Solomon, of course, had, had to use those riches to really, you know, bolster the, the armed forces, the police forces, all those things. Security had never been higher in the nation of Israel when Solomon prayed that prayer. Being in Solomon's prayer, he says, one day, if we see him, we'll be taken captive. And I know the common everyday Israel had to be shocked to hear that. Yet 700 years later, you read the book of Ezra and Nehemiah and the book of Daniel, okay? What does Daniel do? He's praying that God will forgive them three times a day facing Jerusalem, just as Solomon said in his prayer. Uh, we know the Babylonians and the Assyrians, and the Babylonians, the Assyrians conquered the northern kingdom. Then the Babylonians came in and conquered the kingdom of Judah, okay? And took them away captive for 70 years, as Jeremiah said it would happen, because of Israel's continued sin against God. Solomon says in his prayer, he says, If they will turn back to you, please have them to find compassion in the eyes of those that have taken them captive. Read the first chapter of the book of Ezra. It is fascinating because it's a fulfillment of that prayer. I mean, Daniel and Ezra are both alive at that time. Daniel is praying, you know, how, how the 70 years is about up. How are we going to get back? And, and Ezra's thinking the same thing. And all of a sudden, King Cyrus makes a decree about the people of Israel. And actually comes to them, where are they at, to go back and build their temple. Shocks them. Read it yourself in the book of Ezra. What Solomon said in his prayer, God directly done. And here you see here, for God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will. God's will will still get done. And the king of, of Persia at that time was not a Christian, if you will. They didn't have Christians in the Old Testament, but he was not godly, if you will. Okay, he was a pagan king. The ungodly will fulfill God's will as well. Whether they, want, whether they realize it or not, they will. They will fulfill their role. And here the Bible says so. It says, God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast. They're going to. And they're going to pick that false church clean and destroy it. Okay? The Antichrist shares with nobody. He may, like I say, a means to an end. He may be your friend and oh yeah. Thank you. But once he gets what he wants or reaches the level of power that he wants, he will get rid of anybody he deems as a threat. And that false church, in the tribulation period, he will deem as a threat. And it's going to be gone. And God says it will be the hearts of those kingdoms <clears throat> to give their will to the beast, and they will destroy it. He says, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Friend, this Bible is going to get fulfilled. <laughs> it already has. The only thing that's left is that last... Uh, clay toes and iron and clay toes and the, the statue of, of the book of Daniel that last terrible beast and what's left of it towards and also the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation that, that's, that's all that's left and any hints that Christ gave in Matthew 24 that Paul gave in 2 Timothy those are the only things left okay to be fulfilled and those things are going to happen it's not a matter if it's a matter of when I go back to Jericho when the nation of Israel, when the first plague hit Egypt, the time clock started ticking. The people of Jericho, the, the people in and about the land of Canaan, you know, as word began to reach them that Egypt is being hit with these plagues, that there's a living God that wants to pull the nation of Israel out, they knew time was going to start running out because they knew they were coming their way. Rahab told them, despise that. We knew it. Yet they did nothing. Today, our world is not doing anything. I mean, the coronavirus, the, the, the mask mandates, all the things that have happened in the last 15 months and the continued politicization, the, the, the cities and the total chaos that they're in right now and, and, and the amount of power that some governors have grabbed for themselves. Friend, all these things you're seeing point towards one end game, and that is the rapture of the church and the ushering in of the tribulation period. These things that I taught have not happened in foreign nations. They have happened in the freest 
country in the world, America. It is America right now that has Marxist organizations that have support from people in D.C. It is America right now that has politicians screaming socialism. How stupid. And people agreeing with that. It is in America these things are happening. Not around the world. They've been going on around the world for a long time. And they're hitting here now. All these things point towards one conclusion. The tribulation period is on the horizon. It is coming. You better make sure you're ready. The year is 2021. 2028 starts the third generation since the creation of the nation of Israel in 1948. It is also a presidential election year. People better wake up. Verse 18. And the one which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Vatican City has a lot of pull. It has for centuries. In the tribulation period, with whatever good Christian people may be involved in the Catholic Church today are pulled out and gone, it is what you're going to have left that the Bible is describing to you. These people will be about power and authority. They will not care about the souls of men or the salvation of people. Only what they can get for themselves. Let me remind you of the people who betrayed Jesus Christ. All right? Now, everybody gets, you know, sensitive about this. With a Jew. No, no, no. Let's, let's, let's sit here and think about this for a moment. The high priest, when Christ was born, you listen to me. When the wise men showed up, came into Jerusalem, the King Herod, and said, we are looking for the Christ child. We have seen his star. Herod didn't have a clue what they were talking about. He sent the wise men away and brought in his priests and scribes. And they told him that he didn't unravel a scroll and read it. They knew who Jesus was. And they walked in there and told him where he would be born. Who he was. What he was about. What the prophets had prophesied. They knew who he was. Nicodemus himself. When he came to Christ. John chapter 3. Nicodemus says, we know who you are. But many of them will not concede to you. Because they don't want to give up their power and authority. And that's what it boiled down to, friend. And Christ knows the heart of men. Alright? Power and authority. What does the Antichrist want? Power and authority. And he ain't giving it up for nobody. In the end times and in the tribulation period, he'll share it for a little bit. But once these, these organizations serve their purpose... He will destroy them without even a hesitation. Because his end game is, I want power and authority, but I want to drag as many people down into hell as I possibly can. Because the devil has entered into him. And that has always been the devil's end game. He wants to drag as many into hell as he can. Unfortunately, he's doing a very good job of it. Okay? I just wish our, our nation would wake up. I wish people would wake up. I wish Christians would wake up and realize it is on the horizon. It is heading our way. You know, and there's nothing going to stop it. I, I don't see uh, right now, everybody's giving the president a hard time. I'll be honest with you. It's gone too far now. I mean, they come up with something something today, try to work on things on the border, and it's really not a, a, any type of problem solving. It's just just talking points is all it is. There's no real correction or fix in that. And I'm not being mean. I'm just being brutally honest. You can go read it yourself. You can see it yourself. You can go on TV and look yourself. And you know your common sense tells you that's not going to solve that problem. That These cities right now, these mayors are begging for... Too late. You, you wackos last summer got all on this defund the police and, and believe that stupidity. And now you're reaping what you sow. And it's continuing to go downhill fast with no breaks. And they don't have answers in D.C. You can't make... 
people still have a brain. And if they know they, and I, and I heard it today on TV, and it made perfect sense. I, I mean, if Los Angeles offered you six figures plus, but you knew right off the bat you were not going to get any support if somebody had the video camera videos you doing it, you're not going to do that job. I mean, that six figures ain't going to amount to anything if they're prosecuting you and taking everything you own because you've done your job the way you were told to do it. Okay? I don't blame them. I don't blame them one bit. They're going to be hard-pressed to find them. I, from what I understand in our own police department here locally, we do have officers that have come from those areas. Because why? They know they're not going to get support up there. And they took pay cuts to come down here because they know they'll be supported locally. They know the community supports them and their leaders support them. I mean, you're seeing the tribulation period is starting to come into view. And it's on the horizon. And I wish people would realize that and understand that. As I tell folks all the time, the number one thing anybody can do right now, make sure you're prepared. You know Christ as your Savior. If this world tarries for 100 years or if this world tarries for 100 hours, if you know Christ is your personal Savior, you'll be all right. Okay? Things will be fine. God bless you for today. Next week we'll uh, get into Revelation chapter 18 and pick up with some more uh, about mystery battle, maybe some more uh, other uh, uh, groups or characters come into play. As far as Mr. Ballot, it may not be just about the religious system. There may be some other things at play as well. And we'll discuss some of that next week in Revelation chapter 18. God bless you for being with us today. Uh, I do want to make a general announcement, but I'm going to also be putting out a phone tree announcement. Those of you watching, our Jolly Bunch tomorrow is going to be canceled. And we'll have, but we will try to have it August the 27th. Uh, just as a precautionary thing, as many of y'all know, our janitor, uh, brother, brother Ronnie Waldrop, has come down with COVID. So do remember him and your prayers. He's in the hospital currently. Uh, I talked to Diane this morning. He is doing somewhat better. So I do remember him and remember his family in your prayers. God bless you once again. Let's close in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you as always for all you do for us. Thank you for our Bible study. And Father, uh, we tried to make as clear as we could that uh, things are on the horizon. We, we, we've got to make sure we know Christ as, we're, as our Savior. Make sure we are prepared and ready. Because we never know when it could be the last opportunity to win somebody to the Lord or our last opportunity on this earth before Christ calls us home. Father, I pray now that you be with us throughout the rest of our day. Watch over, protect us, keep us in your care. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you for being with us today. And you enjoy the rest of your day. And see you Sunday morning.